Hi guys, it's Vishnu here. Welcome to my channel once again. Welcome to Just Simplicity. So here I'm again with the continuation of the previous video. I already said in the previous video that I'll be covering two more examples on uh, obstruction and striking power. So I'll come with two more simple examples. And uh, uh, this video will end that concept. And next video I'll be starting a new concept. Okay. Uh, so let's get uh, directly into these into this position. So you can see here that white is um, materially up. He is an exchange up. But on the other hand, black has two passed pawns and it is supported by the bishop along the bishop on g7 is defending the c3 pawn. And it is once the c3 pawn is more than black has got good control over this diagonal. Okay. So it's black to play and black plays a wonderful move called c2 threatening to you know move the a2 pawn to a1 thereby queening it and white has to give up a rook rook takes a1 and bishop takes a1 uh, that is a threat but white creates another threat by capturing the pawn on c2 now if you push the pawn to a1 queen then rook c8 would be checkmate i mean it is a check but after rook d8 then rook d8 checkmate so white cannot, sorry, so black cannot push the pawn till you capture on, after white captures on rook takes c2. But black has a very wonderful defense and attacking move at the same time. So the threat is, as you can see, rook c8 check and rook d8, rook d8 would be checkmate. It's mate in two. So black plays a very good move, bishop to b2 obstructing the rook from capturing the a2 pawn at the same time freeing up the g7 square for the king so in case of rook c8 check is played you can play king g7 it would be no longer checkmate and black also controls the key square c1 and a1 square if rook c1 cannot be played now because bishop is guarding that square and uh, black is well defending the a1 square uh, with his bishop so if rook e1 is played you don't have to worry about it because simply you can push this pawn to a queen. Rook takes a1, bishop takes a1, and white has come and black is comfortably up in material, and he can win this game. So in this example, you can understand how opening up the lines and diagonals, like by pushing the passed pawn, can work in your favor. Also, it is also a defensive move because you are freeing up the g7 square. At the same time, it is also an attacking move because you are threatening to queen on the next turn. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, in this example, you can see that black is really up in material, is a double exchange up. He has two rooks against two bishops of white, and he has also a bishop. So black is considerably up in material, but it's white's turn now. And before I get into the solution, I would like to state that this is not a position which occurred in a real match or a game. This is an artificially made puzzle just to explain the concept of obstruction in chess. So take it in that light. So here, white plays a move called bishop to a4 check. Um, you can see that These two diagonals are under the control of white, and so you cannot move back. Either you have to capture the bishop on a4, or you have to move your king to c4. Now, if you move your king to c4, then bishop b3 check. The only square that you can move back to your king is king goes back to b5. And once again, if you go to b5, then bishop a4 check. And if king comes to c4 again, then b3 check, b5, bishop a4 check, and this would be a draw by repetition of moves. Okay, so 
the only other move that black has got is to accept this sacrifice by playing king takes a4 but if that is played then you have a series of checks whereby you can create a wall which cannot be breached by black it starts with b3 check b3 the only square you can go to is b5 again c4 check the only square you can go to is c6 again d5 check the only square you can go to is d7 again e6 check no matter whether black plays any move b8 go snatch the bishop on d8 or go to e8 or go to c8 let's say that he snatches a bishop on d8 then you end this game by simply playing f5 now you can see that this wall cannot be breached all the pawns are on light squares you have a dark squared bishop which cannot attack any of the pawns on light squares and the rook anyway even if you say if black plays a move like rook b5 giving up his bishop for the giving up his rook for a pawn still white is not going to capture it because he doesn't want to breach his wall it's better to leave it alone so he will play some other move like king e2 he can only play his king he'll just keep playing his king no matter what black plays so simply this wall cannot be breached the rook cannot move diagonally so it cannot capture any of these pawns if it was a queen or a bishop here any light squared bishop then they could have won this game by snatching at least any one of these pawns because once you get a breakthrough you can push the pawns and exchange the rest of the pawns and uh, clear the way for the uh, pieces to attack the white's king but in this case it's closed the position is completely closed and there is no way to break it so it's a dead draw so this is a very simple and an artificially created a wonderful example to highlight the strength the power of obstruction how obstruction can really be useful because it just it, it just prevents the mobility of the pieces it restricts the mobility of the pieces now no matter how many you can see that black has three pieces up but what's the use you can't do anything up with it so this is a very cleverly created example so i hope you understood this concept and uh, this brings the end to this concept of uh, obstruction and striking power of chess pieces i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you liked it in case you did don't forget to give me a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you like more videos like this do mention in the comments and i'll bring more content like this similar content or even better content so just let me know and uh, that's it guys take care of yourself and uh, wish you all good night bye bye